Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, day three from EMC World, Silicon Angles, The Cube, continuous live coverage from Las Vegas. We're going to stay on this theme of converged infrastructure a little bit. I'm going to bring Stu Miniman from Wikibon.org in. Stu is our converged infrastructure expert. And Trey Layton is here, he's the CTO of VCE, and we're going to geek out a bit. Uh, <laughs> Trey, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, so, uh, big event here, obviously. Um, a lot of the companies that you, uh, you know, are part of are bringing together a lot of customers. Um, so what's the vibe like? What are customers telling you? What's the feedback that you've been getting here at the show? Well, you know, the great thing about EMC World is, is the customer conversations are back to back, and there is so much excitement around what we're doing. But it's not just the current customers, it's customers that are, are, are evaluating our technology against our competition and, and really excited about how we can transform the way that they're doing business. And they're excited to hear about what we're doing in the future and the technologies that we're not only aggregating today, but we're going to aggregate in the future and we're excited to share that vision with them because it's an exciting place and time in our industry and we're excited to be a, a key part of it. So specifically, what kinds of things are you hearing from customers this week? Uh, some of the things they like, some of the things they want you to do. So a lot of, lot of conversations uh, about Viper, uh, a lot of conversations about Extreme IO, uh, a lot of conversations about scale-out storage in general, Pivotal and things that are going on there. And all of those things fall into the category of things that we're very interested in from a technology perspective at VCE. And we're going to bring a VMware Cisco EMC answer uh, to our customers in the space of those technology uh, solutions that are being innovated by our investor companies. So you're relatively new to VCE. Well, not brand new, but, but new enough. It was right? number 60 employee, yeah. I think, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talk about the changes in the past uh, 12 months to um, the platform and what you guys are trying to accomplish and a little bit about where you're going. Yeah, so the product strategy is really, you know, our initial foray or entry into the market was really to build the 300 and 700 systems to focus on enterprise service provider core data centers. Uh, we had a project underway for a long time to develop a smaller form factor system that ultimately became the VBlock 100. There was a lot of conversation mm -hmm. internally to say 100 is going to introduce an opportunity for smaller, more mid-market customers to, to deploy a core asset in their environment. And 100 might not be right for them. So we engineered and built the 200 and released 100 and 200 together. And that rounded out a portfolio of general purpose systems, mixed workload architectures to deploy and support in those environments. We also found that as we, we built this framework of standards to deploy converged infrastructure, that we adapt to the many different use cases that customers have, but we found certain configurations, certain use cases in vertical market segments, and in application segments, that required us to build a specialized architecture to accommodate that unique use case. And we found patterns of scale to be able to deploy that solution to many customers around the world. So we introduced the concept of specialized systems. And so that rounded out our product portfolio where beneath that, we, were, we engage in conversations frequently about management of data center assets. And the challenge with managing data center assets today is customers assemble management technologies based on the use case that they're deploying in their converged infrastructure or just in their infrastructure in general. And those management combinations today understand and are aware of component technologies and not necessarily the integration of those components unless you spend a lot of time educating those management packages on what's been integrated. And so we released VCE's first intellectual property in the form of software development, vision intelligent operations, to really, not to replace any management technologies, but to enable customers' existing management investments to see, understand, not only the products that are in a VBlock system, but also the integration that we've performed and how that integration evolves as the customer's use cases emerge and evolve and they change uh, the parameters of that system to adapt to the unique requirements. Yeah, they have. yeah, that's key. And Stu, you've always said to me that uh, what makes private cloud cloud is management and orchestration, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> otherwise, you know, are you just expanding on virtualization? So, so Trey, uh, you know, I, I think back to kind of the early days of vBlock and, and how it was put together, and since that time, one of the biggest changes from an architectural standpoint is how Flash is disrupting the marketplace. Yeah. So I was wondering if you could talk to us, you know, how are you guys looking at Flash? Are you just kind of waiting for EMC and uh, Cisco to deliver things into the portfolio, or, you know, how will Flash change? What, what a B-block looks like so, in the future. So I think Flash everywhere 
is the answer. So when you think of flash on the compute side, you think of the hybrid array architectures, and we've had flash in the arrays for quite some time. Uh, when you think about all flash array and extreme I.O., it's something that we're very excited about to see and, and, and produce uh, V-Blocks uh, architectural solutions around the current generation of V-Blocks, as well as utilizing that technology in specific specialized roles and, and enabling current customers to deploy that all flash array for their unique workloads that can take benefit uh, from that. Our flash strategy is comprehensive in, in that approach and we don't want to have any one particular approach with flash but allow our customers to consume that technology in the areas that can most, most benefit their workloads. Okay, so interesting. One of the announcements this week was Isilon uh, is now, uh, I believe, sold with uh, the V-Block, so I take you know, existing V-Block and kind of Isilon goes with it. I think the internal terminology is like it's bolted on. Yep. Um, so do we expect Flash to start in that uh, piece or will we see uh, you know, Extreme I.O. in there instead of a VMAX or VNX? So as, as Extreme I.O. gets to the point of, of full release in Q4, you will see multiple approaches to our solution in that space, inclusive of an architecture around Isilon. So the interesting thing about scale out and those two arrays, they complement each other quite well and can benefit customers in very unique use cases in a potentially new architectural solution for V-Block systems around Isilon and Extreme IO. Okay, well one of the other things we've been hearing a lot at this show is talking about really storage kind of expanding almost to be a platform. If you look what's going on with Viper, uh, you know, we were at OpenStack uh, a couple of weeks ago and I, I know uh, VCE has some plays there. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, how, how things like OpenStack or uh, storage, virtual, storage, uh, software defined storage are going to change or impact VCE? Yeah, so software defined everything is coming to a data center new, near you. Right, <laughs> and, and we at VCE very much want to promote and uh, enable our customers to consume the software-defined strategies of each of our investor companies. You know, VCE is a, a Cisco networking company, a Cisco compute company, a VMware virtualization company, and an EMC storage company. And so the software-defined technologies that emerge from those companies you will find and be able to consume inside of our uh, uh, inside of the VBlock system architecture. Now, an important piece of Viper in being that announcement uh, this week, it's going to enable us to do incredibly new things with the VBlock system architecture as it relates to multiple array-based personalities from EMC being in the context of a logical VBlock architecture, and also enable us to potentially address new use cases in commodity-based storage inside Cisco UCS servers to accommodate uh, unique use cases in different vertical market applications uh, for smaller than 100 use cases. Oh, and uh, this would also bring object capability to, to, to vBlock 2, correct? Absolutely. Right. And so as we get into that realm or, or space of things, I, I'm excited to see, you know, when you look at the things that are going on in Amazon, PayPal, Google, these large organizations that are building cloud scale, web scale architectures, it's fundamentally, materially changing the architecture of the data center of the future. And, and doing a, a massive land grab on data center assets or something that enterprises are going to deal with. I think a great quote from, from Paul Moritz in his uh, Pivotal speech was, 44 terabytes of data on a transcontinental flight that could very easily be analyzed to provide real-time information analytics to consumers of that information. There are lots of transcontinental flights of which I fly on quite frequently. <laughs> Taking all of that data and putting it in an enterprise to enable them to transform their business processes is very much an infrastructure challenge that we want to address at VCE and we're excited about the investor companies, their technologies that they're bringing to enable that to become more of a reality for our customers. Trey, we've been talking a lot this week about the, the old multi-vendor world, you know. Yeah. You might remember, you know, many of you in the audience as well. We used to always talk about multi-vendor and it used to be, you know, connect to mainframe or VMS or, or, or Unix. Um, the platforms now are different, but they we're still talking about sort of open and choice, it's sort of new words, but the new, then the platforms have changed. It's maybe VMware, it's, it's OpenStack, it's Pivotal. So how does that affect VCE going forward? I think it strengthens VCE, because one of the things that we do is, is we're one of the only companies that productize integration of best-in-class technologies and then support that integration. Now, 
our investor companies are each investing in the OpenStack initiatives. We want to bring together the, the OpenStack aggregation of their strategies together in the context of V, C, and E so that our customers can consume those strategies in, at an aggregation level. And um, there's lots of choice in hypervisors out there. I mean, VCE has been supporting uh, other hypervisor choices by customers for different workloads and unique workloads. We do the world's most advanced engineering in integrating VMware's hypervisor, and we believe it to be the most advanced in the industry. But we understand that customers will have requirements to deploy uh, non uh, VMware hypervisor technologies within the frame of the VBlock system architecture and we have customers around the world that currently deploy that. So openness in the context of that, uh, in utilizing the framework of technologies that we have from the investor companies, we're, we're going to continue to do that and we're excited about that. Sure. And Pivotal's openness, candidly, enables us to develop uh, fast data, real-time analytics, infrastructure applications to support some of the work that they're doing in that space of software development in the context of uh, customers who have those, th those, those fast data, um, 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 real-time analytics uh, application requirements. So you mentioned OpenStack, I mean, do you envision committing, supporting, you know, uh, compatibility with, what, 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 what do you mean by sort of working with OpenStack or, you know, participating in that, so, what does that all mean? So what, what I mean by that is a customer wants to deploy OpenStack mm -hmm. on a VBlock. Um, we, we have every intention to enable them to do so in the context of the strategies that our investors are, are making investments in in their OpenStack initiatives. So an aggregation of each of our investor company technologies with, within the OpenStack so, initiative. So is it right. safe to say that, that, v, that, that you will, uh, whatever V, C, and E do for, for OpenStack will... We will aggregate it together and integrate it and product. it. So but it. just like you have your own IP, do you envision actually VCE going even further perhaps than what V, C, and E do independently. Is that a possibility? Where there is opportunities, we would absolutely go in that space. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask, you know, kind of behind the curtain, you know, how, you know, how does your group, the kind of the CTO office of VCE, you know, what, what's that relationship with the parent companies and, and something emerging like OpenStack? So, uh, within the office of CTO, we actually exist within the product development organization and actually play a key role in conceptualizing new areas that we will pursue from a technology perspective. The, the interaction with our investor companies and their product groups is robust and a great dialogue between us. Um, that, that continues frequently and what's interesting is it's, it's a two, it's a two way street. We reach out to them to understand how they're adapting their go to market strategies with their innovations that they're bringing to market as we begin to aggregate those technologies within the product development organization, within our platform engineering group, or within conceptualizing new ways to address new business or use cases within my group, we, we influence the development and roadmaps of where they may go with their individual component technologies to make sure that we're harmonizing together at a better end state for the three companies and partnering and working together. Great, so what's, um What's got you jazzed these days? What are you really excited about? Um, what are you working on? What's next? So what I'm most excited about is, is where we are going with large data center cloud scale, web scale infrastructures and how um, flash, it, it, existing storage technologies will all integrate into that and how the network fabric and some of the technologies that we are able to, if you think today about what is possible when you begin to do software-defined everything. You begin to produce an, a new layer of automation to be able to react to minuscule, minor, ma micro changes within an infrastructure and adapt uh, programmatically configuration changes of component infrastructure to better respond to the changing conditions a workload may need in, in, in a dynamic sort of fashion. And I'm excited about how you combine automation programmatic APIs and component technologies, and where analytics is going to push not only the storing of infrastructure, but the analysis of, of that inf information infrastructure as it's being stored. Pro programmable infrastructure and uh, <laughs> meets big data. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. 
Uh, Trey, hey, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Great insights and perspectives as always. Congratulations on all the progress and uh, we'll be watching. Good luck in the future. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're going to go deep with a VCE VBlock customer and uh, unpack some of that TCO stuff that we were talking earlier with Praveen. So keep it right there. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this message. <laughs>